And now, it's time for the Body Surf Podcast with Tim and Oe. Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast. My name is Tim and with me today is a very special guest, Jared Bridges. How you doing, Jared? Good, Timmy. How are you, mate? <laughs> yeah, going all right, mate. <laughs> Oi, we're here. We're here. We're here. It. It's, it's taken us a while to rig this up, to be honest. I would say a few months. I don't know why it's been so hard. We've bumped into each other a few times here and there. Uh, definitely Womp Camp, you know, speaking left, right, centre on Instagram mm. and trying to tee up a date to do it and the time has done, have cu- has come. We're yeah. here. We've made it at Timmy's house. Hey. Mate. We're here. We, we made it. Cheers. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> so, yeah, a few a few months ago now, we saw each other at Womp Camp at Seals Rocks mm. up the north coast, and we were trying to get you on, and I don't know what happened. Every time we turn a microphone on, for some reason, people disappear. <laughs> yeah. A few people ghosted us. We wanted to get Simon Sven on, who was one of the only Gold Coast representatives at Womp at Camp. At Womp Camp, yeah, with his kids. And, and as soon as we set up the gear, he just disappeared. And what happened to you? Where were you, mate? Mate, I heard it was on. Um, I think me, Richie, Jeremy, and a few of the other boys were chilling out with Sean and Iola. I heard it was on, so I raced up there and come in and the seats were full. I was like, oh, I've missed out on it. I've missed out. Oh, well, next time we'll have to catch up. And... From that night, I chilled outside for a minute. I was going to come in the doors. I was like, I might make too much noise. Oh. So I sat outside for a minute. One of the dudes was smoking a clove cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Did I have a puff? Yes. Did I ask if one? Yes. Did I get one? No. Anyway, then... I decided it was my time to leave, so I left for the night. I heard you picked up the packet of cigarettes and you felt that there was actually a few more in there. I did. I did. <laughs> From memory, I he said, oh, there's not many left or something and I needed one, but I couldn't get one. So then I got one off uh, Sean, I think. I think Sean rolled me a, a durry. Me and Richie shared it and the rest was history. Who's who's walking around Want Camp with papers? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> who's the only one that smokes? That's more of papers. a cigar affair <laughs> in my books. You're not walking around with papers, mate. Iola, aka Sean, is the only one that carries papers mm. and a whole packet of tobacco with him. Nice. nice. <laughs> so if you want a cigarette at Want Camp, has he got a little pouch? Has oh, he got sure it all? No. He's got it all. Set up? Yeah, yeah, Either nice. on him or in his. Mum's van that he yep, took up yep. to Womp Camp. Yeah. When did cigarettes become this weird currency? Like in prison, obviously, it's a thing. But also at train stations. Mm. I'm always getting asked for cigarettes. Always up, yeah. But That's what a, do I get in return? Nothing. Yeah. You can offer someone $2 here and there or, <laughs> you know, they might give you two for free or whatnot. Yeah. Go to Gosford Station and you might get Most of the time it's half just a, a cigarette. Yeah, it's, a, it's a thanks champ and see you later. <laughs> I like to carry a lighter around with me. I don't smoke that much, but I just carry a lighter carry because lighter. I just want the admiration of smokers. <laughs> have you got a lighter champ? Yeah, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> don't have a smoke, but I've got a lighter. I'll give you that one for sure. <laughs> so how long have you been going to Womp Camp for? Womp Camp was set up ages ago and we, we talked a little bit about the origins of Womp Camp mm. a, few, a few months ago here on the podcast. But when did you start going? <laughs> Going to Womp Camp. Mate, um, 2019 was my first time going to Womp Camp. Me finding out about Womp Camp was in the surf at Monavale, and I met a guy called Vic. And me and Vic met up here and there, just randomly in the surf on the days I'd get a bit at the local, at my local, Monavale. Then I found out a thing about a thing called Womp Camp. Vic told me a bit more about it, told me there was an Instagram page, jumped on there and I was like, oh, I'm too young, I don't have my license, I can't get up there, how am I going to get there? How old were you at the time? <coughs> oh, mate, I think I was 15 or 16, just a young dude trying to get a wave. <laughs> and the only way to do this was re- reach out to the people who run the Womp Camp page and try to get myself a lift there. Then I heard about this dude called Corey Sainsbury. <laughs> <laughs> Reached out to him on Instagram. I was like, hey, dude, like, 
you know, I'm young, dumb or lost, just need to get a womp camp. So he somehow organised a trip for me to get from Sydney to Seal Rocks with Corey. And I think it was the Thursday, we left on the Thursday, the Friday, and my mum dropped me up at Hornsby Station, <laughs> Hornsby Train Station. And he picked me up there in his, in his black um, Pathfinder and off we went. When I got to Womp Camp, met everyone, good night. Billy, Billy Slater was there. And hearing the, the Womp Camp song changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> Especially him making that guest appearance for the first time. In <laughs> um, Yeah, then I heard stories about Corey worried he was going to get <laughs> I don't know if you've heard them before, but by you, yes, uh, he was very, very worried about picking some random bloke up from Hornsby Station, from Hornsby <laughs> Station, and giving them a lift all the way to Seal Rocks. But I got there, he got there safe, I got there safe. That was the main thing. Um, and I think from there on, that my life has changed. How long had you been body surfing before that trip? Uh, I reckon a year or two. Okay, so I'd say I've been body surfing for about five or six years now um and what got me into body surfing was my mum's first or well, my mum's ex-partner i saw we we're at narrabeen beach one day and um we used to go to the surf go for a surf after school and stuff some days and i seen him catch a wave and go straight down the face that's all he knew how to do where was this at northern beaches Northern Beach. at narrabeen beach yeah, yeah. yeah so i see him catch his wave i was like that's really cool and i was this young fat chubby little kid thinking yeah, that's, that's pretty cool like i want to get into that so i gave it a go and i could go straight but i d- didn't know how to do the other tricks and stuff and then i remember over time i was at my dad's house one night i was just laying in bed and that day i went to the beach went body surfing and could like right away if go go left or go right and then that night laid in bed went on youtube searched up hawaiian's body surfing and then I seen the crazy waves they ride, all the tricks they can do. And I was like, yeah, seen the spins. So the next day I went to the beach after sleeping that night, dreaming about how I'm going to ride the perfect wave, went to the beach and pulled off my first spin. Nice. I was like, this is it. Was it a spin into the wave or did you catch the wave first then do a spin? Spin on the wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely not as smooth as they are nowadays, that's for sure. Um, but the progression over time and since that day has improved massively yeah yeah so your your mother's ex-partner when when you saw him going down the face of the wave straight down was he using any gear or was he just going mate just just boardies yeah just had boardies on no hand playing no no flippers but then once i started getting into body surfing remember my mum brought me a hand plane what sort of hand plane it was like this big ugly thing and i was like what what is that? Like, I was, I was almost embarrassed to take to the beach. Don't tell my mum that. <laughs> Do you know what <laughs> I don't you want to from? tell her? From surf, uh, not not surf off. It was a surf shop at Long Reef. That's I think it's it's still there, and they sold these big ones. But um, you put your hand like in them, and your arm sits on top of them in a way. But it was like some big plastic thing. Oh yeah, I know the yeah. one. It's grey. Well, no, it was a, it was black. It was black. I didn't yeah. want to say this big black ugly thing because <laughs> yeah but it was this big black thing okay and yeah i just i just didn't like it like I, it looked ugly mm. was too big anyway I, I didn't really use it at all i would take it to the beach with me and just leave it on the sand leave my bag whatnot have you still got it oh, probably be in the garage somewhere i'm sure it'd be in storage or the garage in a box somewhere whack it up on ebay see what you can get for it <laughs> same in my first I'm sure matthew opinions. bond will buy it <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my first pair of fins are in the garage somewhere too. They were like all the beginner days now riding the duff in. So like, when did you start getting... Your mum gave you that hand plane. Mm. When did you start getting your own gear? Did you already have some fins lying around I or think, something? I think me and my stepbrother went to that same surf shop, caught a bus down there one day and brought a pack, like a... It was like a, a fin package deal. I don't know what you got with it, but I remember the fins being in his bag. But Probably a hmm? stealth boogie board no they weren't (laughs) they weren't stealth and they weren't like they weren't anything like the limited edition flippers or anything like that with the penguin cut feet thing but they were just like i think they were called mad dog flippers maybe right some 
cheap things that we could afford back in the day. And him and I would go out then, you know, catch the bus down to Manly from Alambi Heights, give it a go and, you know, catch a catch a wave and then come back home. Um, and then I since stopped using those fins and found out what Daffin were when, a few years ago and loved them. And then uh, Ricky from War sent me um, a little hand plane, hand plane package deal with a hand plane, T-shirt, hat. And I use that bad fish since the day I got it. And I never liked using hand planes at all. Like yeah. I was always just fins, just natural like that. Yeah. And then when I started using a hand plane, I remember I went out there without the wrist strap on at Monvar Beach one morning, pretty big swell. And it came off. I was like, fucking, I've lost it now. Mm. And I go in the shore and it's in the shore waiting for me. Learned to use a wrist strap from that day on. And then I remember hearing about Coolum or one one comp that we have. And there was no, I, I didn't want to use a hand plane or Richie Evans said no hand planes or something. So I, I learned to go from using not using hand plane to using hand plane to not using one again. Mm-hmm. And then, like, that transition was hard. I was so used to using the hand plane, going to nothing. And you just feel empty without one when you're going under waves or when you're on a wave. Yeah. And I always use the hand plane on my left hand. So Are you left-handed? No. Okay. I'm not at all. <laughs> Are you a bit ampy? But if I'm ever, like, I always describe it to people as if I'm ever riding a push bike and I fall off it, I will always fall on my left side. So I think my left side's just my stronger pain tolerant side. Mm. So that why when I'm on a like when I'm riding on the hand plane, going over bumps or whatnot, you get the impact on your arms. And that side of my body would just take a bit better and it was more like my right side's unco. <laughs> With a hand plane on, but my left side's sweet. When I'm trying to work out what what, pe- what way people favour, I always ask them a few questions. Are you goofy or natural when you skate? I'm natural. Are you what what hand do you hold a tennis racket in? My right. What what way do you uh, hit a golf ball? With my left hand. Your left hand when you play golf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's it. That's why you favour <laughs> your left for sure. Left hand playing golf and cricket. Anything that and cricket needs sure. that swing oh. motion. Same with tennis. I'll yeah. go, you know, both hands. My left hand will go at the yeah. bottom, you know. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know why I've done that, but been that way ever since I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. So when you went to Womp Camp that first time with Corey Sainsbury, when he picked you up from Hornsby train station, <laughs> what was in your floppy bucket then? Oh, I don't even know if I had a floppy bucket. <laughs> you probably had I a little swag bag or a I little... did I had like I remember getting dropped off at that train station with like a few bags oh, I got my food bag I think I was just like you know shit in there like <laughs> baked beans and like stuff you can just like use throughout the day that you don't have to cook and I just had my flippers from memory it was just my flippers and I just went up there with that and and my um, you know, my dick stickers, my budgie smugglers. Mm. That's always a surfing. I've to this day, I've never bought a wetsuit. I've always been given wetsuits um, until they break. Richie Richie Evans just gave me my last wetsuit for my birthday. He says, um, I mean, he just he just did his tendon and his bicep last year. Well, I started this year, sorry. And um, he's like, oh, while I'm while I'm out, you can have my wetsuit and use that because um. There was a few days there with the surface pumping, but it was freezing. I didn't feel like going in mm. in my budgies. Um, but yeah, so I remember that first womp camp, just going there with just a pair of flippers, my dick stickers and a towel, then the food and clothes yeah. I needed. What what flippers were they at the time, sorry? Oh, I think they might have been Daffin yeah. from memory. Um, if not, I did go through the chat of me and Corey's just before and seen that he might have had a pair of flippers for me possibly. Yeah. So maybe maybe I had a I think there are a few flippers going around that year. Someone pair, brought up a big Yeah. Big yeah box there was of few, stuff. And yeah. a few spares and stuff mm. if people lost theirs and stuff. I think I do remember that. Um but yeah. That 
Womp Camp changed my life. Really? Yeah. In terms of the body surf community and who was around and people you meet. Do you mean it changed your life in like <coughs> you just found a group of people that you clicked with and that you're going to continue being around forever and growing within the sport, growing with your friendship? Yeah. I think it was knowing more people within that sport because I honestly thought I was the only one that did it. Mm. Besides me and Vic that surfed at Monavale and Vic used to live in Monavale as well and that's my hometown. Um, I never knew it was like a big sport. Yeah. And then that first womp camp on the way up, Corey and I stopped in at the grog shop, you know, me being underage. Corey ran in, got my beer for me. <laughs> got a case of VB, I think, <laughs> cans. And it was that, it was that like, it was that too, you know, you go to womp camp, have your beers over night time, you surf the daytime and then fire as well. And it was just that, like, community that I was like, yeah, this is sick. Yeah. I could see myself being at more of these events. And, yeah. And then from there on, it obviously led to um, Ricky's ABC, Australian Body Surfing Classic, what it is now. Yeah. What was it? Womp Off. Womp Off. That's yeah. what it used to be called, Womp Off. Um, and now Northern Beaches. We're starting a comp this year. In Avalon. In Avalon. Yeah. Um, bit of a unique location for it, I guess. Um should be a good one. We're holding two events. Um, one, uh, um, an International Body Surfers Association one for the tour and just our own body surfing festival of froth is what it's called. I love the name. Which, I love the graphic as well. It's yeah, so the graphics I seen on the group chat the other day, they're just next level. Mm. So, you know... Congratulations to who designed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Richie's mate or something. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've been getting some stuff done by them as well. Yeah. Really, really talented awesome. artists. But um, the the Festival of Froth, yeah, it's it's all happening. I've, I've entered, but yeah. it was just an expression of interest. Mm. So I'm just wondering if you're involved, how official this is going to be. So I've put my expression of interest in as well. <laughs> good, good. Obviously. <laughs> Um, I was meant to be on like the whole committee thing with it, but life took its turn and I'm just way too busy. Like I can't keep up with it. That's just big body surfing for you. Always pushing out the little guy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So at the moment I'm letting the, everyone that's involved do their works in the background. I'm still on the group chat, reading through it here and there and seeing what's going on. I mean, good job. It's getting put together really last minute okay, yeah. which is hectic and there's help from Darren that runs Cool and Wedge and it's awesome like it's great to see everyone coming together and like making this happen so quick for September um, so yeah September 9th and 10th I'm pretty sure mm. is when it's on so that should be a great weekend I'm super super keen and the reason I kind of entered because you've seen me body surf I'm nothing special I, just, <laughs> I go out I'm a bit of a hack but uh, because it's so official it'd be very funny to be like number 400th in the world <laughs> you just get on that ranking <laughs> board just to get on that ranking but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I'm very interested to see how, how all that stuff um, plays out on the day but it looks like a great event I'm very excited about yeah. it and it's good to see something something out at Avalon. I mean, Avalon has such good surf and consistent surf. Yeah. And they do a, a fair bit of like stand up surf comp yeah. out there. But I don't do they do some boogie surf comp as so, well? So obviously Avalon is on the northern end of the northern beaches. It's quite far away from stuff. You have to go through the bends. And the bends are the Bagola Bends. Mm. And a lot of people who live on the southern side of the Bends don't go yeah. across the Bends. They, they don't go past the Bends. We see that area is like enemy area. And they see it as the southern end of the Bends. Yeah. The people who live on the northern end see us as the enemies, enemies as well. So Avalon is quite far away from hotels and accommodation and stuff, but we do have good transport to get to Avalon. Mm. And then... Surf wise, I reckon it's a cracker spot for it. There's, you know, there's North Ave, Middle Ave, and South Ave you can surf. Um, I think it's, we're holding it in the middle, more, more towards Middle and South. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Little Ave. Have you heard of Little Ave before? It's like a little reef break. Um, I've got some videos on my Instagram of it, but you have to, you can either climb down like the cliff, walk down the cliff to get there. Or you can rock up at the pool or swim out from the beach and get there. It's a pretty big swim from the beach. 
Um, if you know the rock off, that's the easiest, and you can rock off and rock back on there. Best barrel you'll ever get in your life. Really? Like, you I've, I've never surfed Salander or anything, but for Northern Beaches, the best barrel you'll get. You'll have to take me there soon. I'm, I'm, I'm keen to explore more of that area, yeah. and I'm very keen to get to Avalon. I've only been there once since moving out this way, and yeah, you're right. It's a little little fun drive, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. even if you're coming from the South Coast, <laughs> it's not that bad. Can't be that bad, no. Uh, there's a comedian who lives out there, Al Bente, and he's an amazing comedian. He's done like Just for Laughs. He's got one of the best, I think he's got maybe two of the best Just for Laughs sets ever broadcast on television. <laughs> and he does a lot of gigs out there and they often put me on them because I kind of live out here and get there easy. But when you're not getting paid to do stand-up, <laughs> out north sometimes you're just like oh i'll be i'll be the front door but next it, time. It, if i can if i can turn it into a weekend away if i can go hey i'll come do a spot and then have a surf the next day mm. absolutely because often they give you free accommodation when you do these little yep. weird stand-up gigs but yeah not a lot of comedians like going out there and it seems like not a lot of body surfers like going <laughs> yeah. out there either but i'd love to go check out that little av break yeah, and, Timmy. oh man that sounds so good next time next time you're up that way you give me a message mm. and we'll, we'll have to tee up hopefully the surf crank in there mm. and um, mm. we can get out for a bit of a barrel there i'm so excited about this this lead up to what's going to be like a month worth of, of body surfing. So we're going to have the Avalon mm. Comp, the Festival of Froth, and the next weekend is the Australian Body Surf Classic. Mm. And then I've got a golf competition in Kiama. <laughs> <laughs> you want so to stay there for the week. I'm just going to be, yeah. Because, yeah, the Australian Body Surfing Classic is in, in Kiama. In Kiama. This year, yeah. So, oh, man, it's going to be a, a lot of fun. A bit of driving around, but yeah. nothing too bad if you live in New South Wales. That's right. It's going to be interesting to see how out of, state guests go interstate guests go and also international people go yeah so i um nice one mm. <laughs> i was are you good do you need another i'm all good for now mate. i've got half left um i was thinking that there's two comps back to back back to back yeah you know and we did ask permission from ricky okay, to yeah. hold um the Northern Beaches Festival of Frost, so close to ABC, Australian Body Surfing Classic. Um, and, you know, it's all going ahead. So it is going to be interesting to see how people from interstate, different states, yeah. like, and possibly international are going to make this work. Are they going to stay here for a week? From that weekend, they arrive for the Festival of Froth till the next weekend. Or are they going to come, come here for that weekend, go back home then come back the next weekend so who's the fin sponsor for festival of froth oh is it i don't know is it i don't know is it i don't know <laughs> we better I, not say we better not we're like, wrong. but that, that could influence <laughs> get, who yeah. comes yes that's very true so yeah it'll be interesting to see who's there on the day i wish, and then, I, wish I could no, hey. Yeah, it's all good. Maybe uh, I should do some research. So you're on the zeros with me, man. You you mentioned you've been sober for about eleven months. Ten. Ten months. Ten, so do you have the app that tracks no, you? No, I you don't. You should get it. It's really good. Yeah. So yesterday on the fifth of um, what, what was yesterday? August. Fifth of August was uh, actually this might go to air later, but yeah, yeah, sure. Was my ten months. Fifth of August. Yeah. Sober. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, was my ten months sober. So. That's an achievement for me, I guess. You mentioned when you went to Womp Camp for the first time with Corey, you were underage and having a drink. Um, what was the reason for getting sober? Um, uh, last year in 2022, I was a bit of a menace. Mm. Yeah, and my last bender was Listen Out, that festival. Who was on the liner? <laughs> Fuck, I can't. I <laughs> try, try and make me remember that weekend. Well, that's, that's how you know you got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't um, remember who was you know, that I, I hear song, songs pop up on the radio here and there. I was like, that was played Listen Out. I remember it's like this and that buzzed on my head. Because when <laughs> um, I went to Listen Out, Childish Gambino was the headliner. And I'm like, this is the last time he's going to come to Australia. I'm never going to be able to see him again. And he's popped back in a few times since. <laughs> Mate, who doesn't? But there's so many people that say they're not coming back yeah. and they end up going on tour again. Oh, if you like cash money, mate, come to Australia. It's, <laughs> yeah, fucking know. It's an easy day's work. <laughs> <laughs> you get it easily. Um, yeah, no, that was my 
eye opener for me having to go sober that identifying I had a problem there mm-hmm. was knowing that that's what I look forward to in life was yeah, to yeah. get up and just get on it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. And I was the same. Like every, every day at four thirty, five o'clock. That's all I was thinking. I about. work and just stayed on it, waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah working and, for that that next drink. Yeah, you, you live for it. Mm. So, are you going to be doing it, or going to be trying to do it forever, or is it a, a year off and then and trying to manage it differently, like harm minimization, that sort of thing, or, or how are you traveling with it all? Um, I mean, I'm hoping to. Like at the at this current point in time, I don't have any thoughts on going back to drinking. Or I, I appreciate people like you who can sit around and have a non-alcoholic with me, or still have fun without that drink, mm. because that that gives you that boost of confidence. Having the alcohol, it gives you that boost of that confidence that you don't have. You know what I mean? Mm. Um. I was talking to my mate the other day. I was like, oh, I have, have a drink at my wedding. <laughs> and he goes, mate, you're marrying the wrong person if you're going to drink at your wedding. <laughs> and um, I look back at that and I just think, fuck, that's so funny. Maybe I shouldn't drink at my wedding. I I, I have... Um, one. My favorite comedian is a guy called Joe List. He's an American comedian based in New York. And he's been sober for a while and he goes on a lot of big podcasts and he tells his story about what happened to him and why he stopped drinking and it's a very entertaining story. <laughs> um, but I, I look at him as inspiration and I see what he's up to and I, I see what he's done and at his wedding, he was having a toast with a, a, a glass of water. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. I honestly <laughs> don't think I could go to my own wedding whenever that may be and hold up a glass of water with my wife and and everyone else mm. that's there and have a toast. Mm. Like, it just doesn't work like that, I don't think. And tradition as well. Mm. It's like, this year, Womp Camp, I was sober. Yeah. And that's like, tradition at Womp Camp is to get on the piss at night, yeah? Mm. Get on the beers, wake up the next day, feel a bit salty, but still going out for a surf. At six thirty in the morning, whatever the sun's coming up, you know. Um, so yeah, I guess that whole story about listening out and stuff was my realization of becoming sober, wanting to be sober, and not wanting to spend every week feeling sorry for myself or feeling depressed or like yeah, actually wanting to live yeah. and live for something. Yeah. So and you can still have fun sober. It took me about a year to figure out how to do it. Mm. I mean, watching sport sober and even not gambling is the hardest thing you'll ever do. <laughs> but it, it takes a while and you and you just learn ways of sort of enjoying it differently. Yeah. Um, but you can do it. But the wedding thing's interesting for you. You're sort of saying like you, you, you love that tradition. You Would would you feel awkward up there with a non-alcoholic beer in your hand? Oh, probably not. But what do most people do at weddings? <laughs> most- I, I've been to... Uh, uh, I, I I was meant to be Oe's groomsman at his wedding, and it was just as I was getting sober. And oh, Oe had shit. a Oe had a pretty big box, and, yeah. and I was also meant to organise that. And I just said to him, he was very lovely and understanding. I'm like, I can't do this. You can't. Did he wanted you go? to. He want, No, I couldn't go. He oh. wanted to go to the races, and he he wanted you know to get on the piss, and 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 you know that's that's what you normally do, and that's fine. And I just at that time I was so fresh to being sober. I couldn't do it. And no, that's what you want. I felt bad, and I had I had the pull out, and I could I couldn't I couldn't go. But it's I've been sober for two and a bit years, and I've been to a lot of bucks sober. It's mm. fine. I've been to a lot of weddings sober, and it's been lovely that people make such an effort for me. Mm. They go, yeah. "Hey, we're going to get you know these non alcoholic beers yeah. for you," and and the bartenders even know you by name. Yeah. They just have them ready. Like it's <laughs> yeah. great because um, yeah. I used to go the other way when they would know my my poison mm. and they would give that to me straight away 100% yeah. so it's it's kind of it's, it's sort of cool and uh, yeah I'm I'm you know thinking about marriage and all that sort of stuff as well and I haven't really thought about how I'm going to do it but I'm, it's going to be funny or silly or quirky <laughs> Like, I'm also addicted to Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, yes. And, and I've been off the Red Bull for a year. So, oh. like, there's so many things I can't have. <laughs> so, that's, so, the Red Bull's my go-to <laughs> yeah. if I go out. Just I was to gonna, keep me I was going to get you some 
for today because I thought you might like one. But um, it's too much of a temptation. If I had a six pack of beer in there, I wouldn't be tempted. If I had <laughs> yeah. a six pack of Red, Red Bull, Bull in there or it. a four pack of Red Bull, I would yeah. be. Yeah, so I've, I've just that was my New Year's resolution to get off the Red Bull for my health. Awesome. To see how I go. I'll, I might jump back on them occasionally. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, I'm def- definitely trying to stay off the beers forever. That's awesome. Yeah. But, um, you know, you never That's- say never because. You know what can happen. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. See, see what happens at your wedding, but I guess. <laughs> um, I did used to go out sober. And my first weekend out sober, and the first few weeks felt really weird. You know, because you go out with your mates or you're meeting new people and people are spitting in your face because they're drunk. And you're like, dude, like, just get out of my face for a minute. Like, you don't need to spit on me. You can just talk normally. I'm just here. And then I was like, I... I remember from like December to February this year, the last year of this year, I had three months off of everything. Like I didn't go out one bit. All I focused on was my gym, training and body surfing and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And it was so good. And then I think going out for the first time again, not that I remember after that, but it would have been so shit because like everyone again is just drunk. Everyone yeah. around you is drunk. You're sitting there. You feel awkward too. Like you go out and you feel a little bit awkward because no one – no one knows you're sober, but you know you're sober. Yeah. And then like, you know how everyone else is acting and then you kind of look at yourself from their point of view and be like, this bloke must be acting really weird right now because he's sober, but they don't know that, if that makes sense. But yeah, yeah. There was a story about someone at Womp Camp who was cooking something on the fire and they picked it up and they ate it and it was just coal. <laughs> <laughs> was, that, was that this year? Was that you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Eating just coal. Yeah, yeah. I think it was two years ago. Two two years ago. Um, <laughs> was that? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, how many how many comps have you been in? Have you done any individual comps? Have you done any? Oh, obviously, some team comps. Mm. What what sort of stuff have you done in in body surfing competitions? So far, I've done the I've done Ricky's one. So the um, Womp Off Australia. I've done that twice now. When did he change the name? Was it last year? Yeah, last yeah. Year, so yeah. I've done the. Womp Off Australia and the Australian Body Surfing Classic twice. Um, I've done Coolum twice now. Uh, that was pretty nerve-wracking flying to Queensland for the first time. And again, I didn't have any accommodation there. So I stayed at um, Jackie's house up there with him and his missus and crashed on his couch and we'd wake up in the morning. He gave me his electric bike to get to and from place. He lived at the top of the biggest hill ever. Um, and then... So, yeah, they're, they're my only two I've done. How um, did you go? Oh, I remember... Gee, I can't remember last year's attempt too well. I know I didn't make it very far. This year, I did the ISBA event and um, just the normal cool and wedge event. I went pretty good. Got to finals for the normal cool and wedge event. Um, up against all the big dogs. Place fifth. Nice. Which is pretty good. I was pretty happy about yeah, that. Good. Um, and then the ISBA, is that, yeah, International Body Surfing Association, I came, I got kicked out at quarters. Okay. Because, as you know, Coolum every year, <laughs> every year Coolum's held is just shit surf. Mm. There's nothing. It's The first year was a swimming pool. This year was a bit better than a swimming pool. Um, a bit like a wave pool on the most lowest level. Um yeah, a few, few waves rolling through, and um, unfortunately on that on that Friday, um, I just got pushed into a really bad spot with there was no waves, and I was coming apparently I was coming really well like first and second throughout that quarterfinal heat, and um, yeah, just took me to a really bad spot, and then I ran out of time and mm. end up coming last. So I was pretty devoted about that, and I'll be giving another shot in September yeah. at the Northern Beaches. Um, yeah. I've not I've not been in an individual comp and I'll, I'll be going in one soon at Avalon. But the juxtaposition of individual comps and then team comps seems like very very full on. So 
team comps, everyone gets around you and you 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 feel like you've got maybe a bit more support. Mm. When you're doing the individual comps, you're out on your own. No one really yeah. cares about you and maybe it's a bit more yeah. uh, competitive and aggressive. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but with the, the team comp, um, you've been surfing with the Northern Beaches body, body surfers, surfers and those are a great group of guys. Yeah. And how do you guys go in, in, in the Australian body surfing classic? Oh, last year... I think we, oh, I can't remember if we placed, maybe ninth or, we, were, we weren't up there, mm. but we did pretty good. Um, and that was considering there was, what, 13 or 15 teams mm. last year for the Australian Body Surfing Classic. Um, yeah, this year we've got a team entry as well. Um, I've unfortunately missed out on the... Um, registration to go because I was trying to sort out dates um, and I've put in the group chat of Northern Beaches Body Surfers group chat that I've, I've missed out on registrations and everyone's like oh you know like this that Richie Evans put his hand up said I want Jared to take my place he's going to score more points than me and I think one other in the group chat said the same thing so you know I've left it I spoke to Richie the other day I was like dude why do you want me to take your spot he's like bro like I, I'm old <laughs> you're going to score way more points than me buddy and um, I was like, that's fair enough. Look, if you really want me to take your place, I'll give you the money and we'll, we'll go on with that. Um, so, yeah, I hope, hopefully I do compete in the ABC this year and I can carry our team a bit. But I also hope our team is strong. It'd be sad to see Richie sit out, though. Yes, 100%. If... We know how pa- uh, passionate Richie is yeah, about yeah. body surfing, those big waves, and Richie being 56, I think he is, or 54, and the way he catches is just crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm like I saw on YouTube the other day, Tim, um, the Swell Chasers on right. on YouTube, posted Richie on one of his videos and at Salander. <laughs> It's just crazy. You wouldn't see a, an old bloke like Richie catching a wave like that. I didn't know Rich Evans got out to Cape. Yeah. Much. That's awesome. Yeah. So he's been, I think he's been down there twice now. Um, I've got his wetsuit from the first time we went out at Cape and he got hammered apparently. He's got oh, a few little yeah, holes on the yeah. elbow. <laughs> um, but yeah, Richie charges. Mm. Oh, you yeah. Know, yeah. Dead man's DY point, Cape slander. Um, and Kel Kel too. Him, I go Kel Kel quite regularly. Um, yeah, so yes, it would be pretty sad to see Richie sit out yeah. on the ABC. Well, Jeremy and Rich last year had an absolute blast, so I'd mm. love to see them there again. How, yeah. quick, how quick are you on your fins in the fin sprint? So at the Australian Body Surfing Classic, yeah. the big event is, is the, the, the fin, fin sprint, sprint the yeah. relay race. So how, how quick are you on, on, on your Mate. fins? Last year I didn't compete in it. Oh, really? I think the first I remember the first year I did, but the uphill fin sprint that was hectic. Like that was next level. Um, I'm thinking about going in it this year. Definitely going to need some work. I might take some, you know, some cones down to the beach and set them up twenty meters apart and start thought, running I away. Thought, I thought you were going to get out some papers and ro- <laughs> <laughs> thought you were rolling up a different sort of cone there. Um, so yeah, yeah, we we kind of did a, a bit of a time trial to see who was the quickest, and sort of yeah. Now it's sort of based on whoever's the youngest. We're sort of putting in <laughs> youngest. Yeah, okay. I think yeah, that could be a good idea for Northern Beaches this year. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not me. No. <laughs> uh, we have a do. We do have a young bloke called Tom Sewell in our team this year. I'm pretty sure as well. And he he was also on a team for Coolum. Well, in sorry, not team, but like he also competed in Coolum. Um, he's a gun charger. Um, hopefully, he can go on the fin sprint as well mm-hmm. this year and get some points up for the team for sure, and try sure. win. Yeah, Carry yeah, that flag yeah. for us. Yeah. No, it's nice. Would you consider competing with another team? So it's a tough one. <laughs> that means I've got to leave the local squad. Yeah, yeah. And compete against them. Um, depends what team we're talking about here. Um, could be on see what the, if the team wants to welcome me um, there was a chance of me signing up for a wild card yeah yeah you know and whatnot. but 
the wild cards we've had in the past have made a huge difference. They've been pretty wild. Yeah, it's it's a really good system, and it really has helped helped us because you know we're just a, a bunch of blokes having a, a, a red hot go, don't really know what we're doing. So some of the wild cards you're getting are, are pretty legit. So yeah, it's 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 a good way of sort of also meeting new people and seeing you know who's out there and people from different states. We've had a few from the Gold Coast come through and they absolutely shred, so yeah. Yeah, I heard, um, I don't know if I'm meant to disclose this information, but I read in the group chat there might be some Goldie boys coming in the Northern Beaches team this year for some reason, I'm not sure. Well, um, the Budgie boys have Hamish. Oh, Hamish Christie. So, another charger. Yeah. Yeah. Top bloke. Top bloke, definitely. I have got a story of him quickly. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> he's um he's moved down to Sydney. Is he in Sydney or in oh, New South Wales? In he's he's in Newcastle? New South Wales. I don't I think I think he's living in Hornsby. Oh. Possibly. I think last time I spoke to him he was living in Hornsby and he has a has a bub that's come along yeah, now. Yeah. A few months ago we teed up to go for a surf at um curly on a pretty big stormy day it was pretty pretty big um and me and richie call them suicide missions because we're just out there to die but hopefully not die yeah yeah anyway we rock off and i show hamish where to rock off we swim over and off the southern end of curly south curly there's a pool Mm. off that pool there's a rock and the waves break straight onto that. Pretty big that day, but we're in a bit of a rush to get out. And I said to Hamish, just watch out for that rock over there. I get a wave. Obviously, I don't know where the rock is. I miss it. Hamish gets a wave. And I kid you not, he landed straight on top of this freaking thing. <laughs> he come up. And he's, I think I remember him standing on it. It's its kungy, but yeah. it's still, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's still a hard surface to land yeah. on. I know the type. <laughs> um, and he's standing there. I was like, dude, I was that close to warning you, but you got that wave. And he just caught, it was probably like a five foot wave. Yeah, and yeah. he's just caught it and landed on it. So, you know, good on him. Mm. But good on him. He didn't get hurt. Um, but yeah, that was my quick story about Hamish. Well, Christie. Hamish, if you're living in Hornsby, give us a call, <laughs> mate. I've because I'm here in Lane Cove now, and I've, I've made the move from the Southern Shire here, and I'm trying to work out what the best beach is. It's quicker for me to get to Maroubra than to Manly. Is it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. And Manly is a shit. Fight. What about Monavale? I don't know. I, like even freshies and things like that. It's just a little bit further. Like Maroubra is a 28 minute drive. And parking is readily available. Mm. Everything else is just a shit fight, or a, it's just too yeah full on. So I've been just surfing at Maroubra. So yeah, okay. I don't know what Hornsby to Maroubra is, but Hamish, if you want to go for a surf, tee us up. Yeah, let's go. yeah, hundred um, percent. You've been getting a bit into your fitness. I noticed uh, yeah. over the last maybe what two, three years. It was probably yeah, two mainly two years. I've kind of been into the gym. Since 2019, 2019, I signed up at the gym. I think it was November 25th. Yeah, yeah. And was that to help improve your body surfing? Was that just to get fit generally? That was just to get fit generally. And then last year, I went to the next level. Once I got off the piss and all that sort of stuff, I got a coach. I got really fit. Now I've let myself go. In this body, body surf podcast now, I've let myself go. But... I'm making a comeback. I'm getting back in it. Um, but yeah, so in terms of body surfing fitness wise, um, I was talking to Richie the other day. We, him and I are going to start training. So what will that involve? Mate, we've spoken about different things over the years. <laughs> it's come from like timing each other in the surf. We do a 10 minute sprint out there and like to see how many waves you can get coming and see how exhausted you are. Yeah. And just do that explosion training. And just get that lung capacity good, but also like, uh, I don't know the word, but like you can, your stamina, get your stamina like yeah. built up really well. And it's different, like running and swimming are two different things, right? Swimming, you need to swim to build that stamina up in the water. Running won't help you really with mm. that. And I've noticed that like, if you have a week off the surf and you go back in the next week, you're generally like stuffed. You can't swim as well. So in the weeks leading up to these few comps this year, 
I'll be doing my best to get in the water and get my fitness up before the comps so I can swim harder and faster um, and try and make that difference within the teams. Yeah. 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 That's cool, man. I've been doing something similar. I mean, I retired from team competitions when we got third place <laughs> last year. And then I got a text message. Well, I sort of said to the, the boys, hey, I'm here if you need us, but I'd rather not surf. And then they were, they, they would, you know, they're, they're the group of boys who can't organize a route in a brothel. Like they're just the worst people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I messaged Joey because I didn't even know who's in the team. I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, do you need us here? And Owe wrote really nicely back, we just need the numbers. So yeah. <laughs> It wasn't like, oh, we well, really, yeah, we really, we really want you in the team, want you in the man. Team, yeah. yeah, we appreciate you, <laughs> your service. We we think you're a good body surfer. We'd like, man, we need <laughs> the numbers, we mate. We the number. <laughs> yeah. the so number. <laughs> I've been training. I've been training pretty hard. And I, we've got an indoor pool here. And I got the iPhone out and measured it. You know how you can measure Yeah, yeah with the measuring app. And I yeah. measured them it with the measuring app. And it said it was eight meters. <laughs> And I'm like, I've been doing 30 laps a day, but it's only eight meters. But it's just the app stuff. 240 up. meters yeah. all up. I, and then I measured it with a measuring tape. And it's 25 meters. 25 meters pool. So right. I'm a minute and a half off Thorpey's personal best. Now, I don't know if that's good or bad. Yes. Um, but it's almost double. Is that of eight laps? Of, yeah, of 200 meters. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. I think a bit more training is going to help you. If not, you might just be another number. But also, year. it's a, a 25 meter pool. I'm tumble turning a lot more than your average swimmer. You are, yes, you are. Definitely going under that water, getting that front foot back in and, and doing that lap again. Yeah, I think you should start training a 50 meter pool bar. I need to. There is a, a local pool that's, yeah, an Olympic size pool. So I might give that a crack. Yeah, I'd um, be. But I'm very excited about these comps and I'm going to, you know, everyone always writes me off and all oh, Tim's just a bit of a larrick and having a go, but I'm going to prove them wrong. Yeah, prove them wrong this year. Yeah, that's right. I hope you do. I really <laughs> hope you do. Then, you know, next year, if the, or this year, next year, necessarily that, if the Hawaiians, are, imagine they're asking you to go on their team. On what team to fin? Team to fin. <laughs> I'm a hydro boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Won't happen then. <laughs> um, I, and that's why I'm so glad this Avalon uh, comp is happening, the Festival of Froth, like, because it's an individual comp. So mm. I don't have to worry about all the politics. You that's just right. go and do your own go thing. Go do your own thing, have your own yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's just like... Um, and it's a two-day comp. That's right. That's so cool. Yeah. So I'm not sure. What, like we could get some really good surf coming through. We could. Yes, that's right. Hopefully, um, hopefully on the first day to give the people that bit more of a go, yeah. Rather than just having the semis and the finals on the last day and people not getting their fair share of surf. Um, but I mean, if not, if it's very similar to what Coolum's like every year, everyone's going to be used to it. Mm. <laughs> um, and me personally, I haven't surfed Avalon much before. Only little Av. Um, so yeah, I think, I think Festival of Froth is going to be a very interesting weekend. Yeah. And I hope, like, I really hope we get the numbers because it's the first time comp for the Northern Beaches. Um, I hope we can get the word out there and hope, hope enough people come for it. And I was going to say before about traveling, you traveling to Maruba for your body surfing, mm. where you could be traveling to Monavale and it could be the same amount of time. Mm. The only problem is that you need a council sticker to park on the northern beaches. Yeah. And that's about 110 bucks a car or yeah. per sticker. So that's going to be the other problem with some, some people that drive down to northern beaches. If there's no parking, they're going to have to do quite a bit of a walk. Um, so, yeah, I just still hope the numbers are going to be quite up there for the comp and quite a few people get to the northern beaches. Um well, I think Jesse Mawson and myself are going to go together, so we'll work out how to do all the parking stuff. And uh, if you've got any tips, let us know. Yeah, any but tips? I don't mind a walk. I, I sometimes park ages away and just, <laughs> just have a bit of a walk. That's warm fine. up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a bit of a warm Stretch up. Stretch out the old hammy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Um, so yeah, good stuff, man. All right, let's talk about what's in your actual floppy bucket now. We learnt a little bit about how you started and, and you got a bit of weird gear here and there. <laughs> now that you know the sport really well, you know what you like what do you have in your floppy bucket right now right this second 
Okay, so I've got the aqua floppy bucket, the aqua color floppy bucket, the blue one, and has my daffin fins in there, and fin savers are on the daffins. They're a must. Got my wetsuit that Richie gave Richie's me. Wetsuit, Richie's, yeah. Richie's wetsuit, basically, yes. Yeah. Um, got some lube. I mean, not some like, you know, not some like, Fancy Lou, but just some petroleum jelly. Uh, <laughs> for the feet? For the neck. Oh, yeah, for um, the zipper. For when you get yeah, some... Yeah. When you get some um, rash. So, yeah, got some lube, wetty, flippers, and then my hand planes. Yeah. So, I've just got um, my Wampa in there and my Bad Fish in there. So Andre's hooked you up with a Wampa? Andre has hooked me up with a partnership with him. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, a bit of a sponsor from... Team Wampa. Andre, yeah. Riding the Wampa. Um, Is Andre competing in anything I coming up? I don't know. I haven't asked him. I'll get onto that. Yeah, I yeah. will definitely get onto that. I'll um, send him a message after this, hopefully, and um, see if he's getting on, to, on board. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll be riding Wampa this year at events, um, this year at comps and future comps. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's all well, that's in my floppy bucket. Yeah, yeah. Right this second. And how did you get there? What sort of stuff have you gone through? What sort of things have you felt out? What sort of things do you still keep in your back pocket? Because I always think like your floppy bucket is like a golf bag. It you is. Know, you, you 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 have things for different swell conditions, different occasions, it different is. beaches. That's right. Um, I guess I've always been that kind of basic kind of dude, but I've always ever body surfed in budgie smugglers. <laughs> Where if you look at Corey, he's, he comes to Womp Camp with freaking 10 different wetsuits, mm. you know, springy or long sleeve or short sleeve, long legs, yeah. all that sort of stuff. I've always just had the basics in there, you know, hand playing flippers and wetty. Occasionally the wetty. Um, so yeah, and, and then I guess what's always in there because I don't always use a hand plane is my hand plane, um, and then when I'm doing trips, I will always carry a spare pair of, pair of fins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's a must. Um, definitely, even going to Queensland to Coolum for Coolum Wedge, I will always pack another pair of fins mm. because we all know what fins can do. They can snap or whatnot. You can lose one in the surf if your fin savers aren't on properly or whatnot. So. Yeah, like I said, I guess my floppy buckets just always got the basics in there. Have you done any trips to Melbourne? No, no. Are you keen to try like ur- an artificial wave? Urban surf, yeah. I think you'd do really well there. It's on the list to do mm. for sure. Uh, I think it's hundred bucks an hour or something isn't it? at the yeah, yeah. at the event. Yeah, so it'd be pretty cool to get a a bunch of us together. For a day, fly down to Melbourne yeah, the, for a day. The Northy boys could could do a little trip together. That'd yeah, be a lot of fun. that'd be that'd be a lot of fun. That's right. I'll jump in on that. That'd be awesome. And you invited yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Got the invite straight away. I think I just organised it. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, but pretty much. Hey, we might have to get that group chat running. Um, um, yeah, it's because we did it with the Slide Boys, and that was really really fun. But yeah. what was hard was travelling to Melbourne. Like going to the Gold Coast, going to Queensland. You can sort of work out what you need and what you don't need. But with Melbourne. It was very hard to decide whether or not we were going to take wetsuits. And we ended up not. Oh, and I went just in budgies. But it's I've, I've heard that water in those pools is freezing. Mm. We didn't notice it too bad. We had a bit of sun out. Yeah. And we were recording the podcast in between sessions. And we were just sitting in our budgies with a bit of sun, sometimes a hooded towel on, and yeah, we okay. were fine. Yeah. So you sometimes get lucky in Melbourne. But so what's, what's the artificial waves like very fun i i was there a little bit late because my uber driver got lost it was it's the the pool's right near the airport and he got lost so i i paddle out there and there's this little rip that takes you out the back and then you just sit there in this like corner and you sort of just line up and take turns and they had set it to beast mode or one of the heavier waves (laughs) straight away so i didn't know what was going on and uh, there's a photo of me like absolutely kooking (laughs) and i'm 
on a, a slide hand plane that I've never used before and I'm just getting smashed. But then when I, they, they, the next session they put to like medium or something, you know, learn, okay, this is how you ride that way. Mm. It, it's very fun, very easy. You get long, long rides. You get, you know, barrels for days. So how big does it get? The, the beast mode, I would say, is maybe four foot. Ooh. Yeah. That's not bad. Mm. Yeah, that's good. And where, where you take off, how far down the face does the barrel start? Oh, maybe, maybe like three, four meters. Like it's pretty yeah, instant. Pretty instant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty instant. Yeah, okay. Because it looks really fast if you see the Instagram videos of it. Yeah. It looks really, really fast. Yeah, it just like this thing just builds up in the corner and then pushes out. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's very interesting. That um. It, and if we get one in Sydney soon, that'll be really that'd cool. be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. 100%. We would love to run like the Budgie Boy Classic there and just the Budgie Boy Classic or the Budgie Boy Invitational, maybe. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> oh. Because I think in terms of if we were ever going to try and broadcast body surfing, doing it in a controlled environment like that is Mm. the way to do it. And the water looks so nice. It's bright blue. (laughs) It's just... And we, we, we did some, um, we, we did a live broadcast last year at the Australian Body Surfing Classic and we just had like a very gorilla setup. Mm. But if you took a few cameras down... And you got some good commentators. You can make. If it you wanted to switch it live or edit it later, I think some television networks might be interested in it. Yeah, yeah, do it. Mm. That could be on. Yeah, it could be fun. Give, give that a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For I'll sure. be, yeah, I'd be sending that one. That's for sure. Um, but yes, yeah, definitely. Like you said, um, we need to get a northern beaches or northern body surfers. Um, group down to Melbourne for Urban Surf. Yeah. Um, so I think, Timmy, you have just organised the next Let trip. me check my frequent flyer points. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll share any with <laughs> we'll me. See, we'll see what <laughs> we can do. Because last time I flew to Melbourne was with Tiger. And that was just as some things were happening with Tiger. <laughs> oh, okay. So how, how much were you looking... Uh, well, it's just that's there. There were some planes well, that were not being. <laughs> yeah, the defaults I had wasn't there one over the sea or something. Where it was more that um, they were the planes that were allegedly not being cleaned very well. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's a worry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was I was in Melbourne for this trip to to go to Melbourne Surf, and I was watching Four Corners. And it was when they were in China and in Wuhan and they were nailing shut doors <laughs> so people couldn't get out of their homes. For COVID. And then we're flying home on Tiger <laughs> <laughs> on thinking, unclean. are we going to get back <laughs> yeah. to Sydney or not? So yeah, it's it's very funny how all this stuff is like. Because like as we were saying, 2019 Womp Camp, Crazy. no one was talking about yeah. COVID. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't nah. a thing in Australia. Nah. And we didn't think it was going to hit Australia. Mm. And then when it did and everything closed down, I mean, I still remember surfing through COVID. I yeah, remember going well, out you were surf. allowed to, yeah. It was the best. Yeah, there yeah, was yeah. no crowds. The Northern Beaches gets packed, yeah. absolutely packed. And I remember just going out at Monavale and Warriorwood and literally there'd been like a few guys out and you don't even really talk to each other because if they had COVID mm. or it could be in the water or not, I don't know. It's just like we all got worried about back then. But they, I reckon that was some, some of the more fun days of body surfing on the beaches. Mm-hmm. And there's no crowds and stuff. Yeah. But back to urban surf, I think this time around, when we can organise a trip, will be a pretty ideal time to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that, get that happening. Um, there was something I was going to say about <laughs> a time at DY Point with Richie Evans. Um, do you know DY Point, the, yeah. the break? So I've got a few videos on my Instagram there on some pretty big days and sky monkey filming me if you've heard of sky monkey before he's a local drone oh cool drone pilot on the northern beaches and films Salander and stuff um but i remember day it was about i'd say 10 foot or eight to 10 foot 10 foot massive sets on that day it's rolling into dy point and me and richie were looking at it like should we go out there was no one out there, no surfers at all. And it was like a death sort of day. And there was a rip. There's always a rip to the left as you're looking at DY Point. That just goes straight out to sea or the long reef for me. And I remember just looking at it with Richie. And Richie just gets this feeling of like, if it looks 
like it's gonna kill you richie just gets this energy that like let's fucking do this let's go let's get out there and richie's like yeah let's go come on so we're swimming out there our mate luke is filming us from the pool swimming out in this huge surf to get out to the the point and there was two surfers behind us i didn't know that they were in a video i saw and um they, they ended up going back in because they couldn't get out. Richie and I finally made it out. And I kid you not, the surf that day um, was some of the best surf I've ever ever been in. DY Point is a break that gets very packed. Was this winter? I don't think it was. Were you in swimmers? Oh, I was in budgies. Yeah, yeah. I was in budgies. I think Richie, he was just in maybe 40s. Because I've had swimmers rip straight off me, even in like three foot surf. Yeah, I so could imagine ten foot surf so, coming off. Yeah, no, it was like oh, me and my budgies. They're very tight okay. on me. I tie them up very tight, Richie. I don't know how Richie hasn't lost any pair of boardies in the surf. Yeah, um, especially on the waves he gets. But that day was just something unforgettable. Mm. It was like those days you look at a break and you're like this thing like looks so dangerous but there's no one on it let's go and i just wanted to like bring that up as a little oh yeah little side story of just any froth on that day anything bigger than six foot i think needs the, it deserves a story on the podcast <laughs> yeah yeah so like there was some big wave sent um and i'm saying 10 foot was probably the biggest on that odd yeah. huge set that rolls in um but yeah yeah. Can we quickly talk about where you just came from? Just then. Yeah. About my gig I was at. Yeah. So, um, I was just at Bear Island, mm. which is in La Perouse. Um, And I did, I did Aboriginal dancing. So, I was just dancing at an event called the Black Markets. And that was hosted on Bear Island. And I got there. My feet are killing me, mate. My feet are so sore right now. We were dancing on concrete, but like, do you know that like real bitumen stuff? It's yeah, like, it's a bit gravelly. Just really gravelly yeah. concrete. Oh man. And I had to do two dances about 20 minutes each. Hey, I've got shred up feet at the moment. But yeah, just come from that straight to Timmy's house <laughs> to do the podcast. You feed a red raw. I feed a red raw. And you did offer me <laughs> a floppy bucket with. Warm water and was it bath? Uh, bubble bath. Bubble bath in there, <laughs> or, like, or ice. If or you or, or them, ice. Yeah. yeah, I was I was gonna like hang towards the ice option, thinking <laughs> that'll be a bit better. But then sitting here with my feet so nice now, or yeah. in hot hot water with bubble bath in it, um, just probably soggy and cut up. Like you know, <laughs> I've been meaning to get to the black markets. We're in uh, we're in the market for some Aboriginal art. Mm. and uh, we've been looking at some really cool stuff and, mm. and some stuff's quite affordable and really nice and will fill the space we need to, to put it up in but some's very expensive yeah <laughs> that's right yeah I don't like I don't know many artists I guess necessarily for Aboriginal stuff but I know that it's very expensive because it's all hand done mm. so all it, the dot work and all that sort of artwork is all hand done yeah, oh yeah it's this week's time can yeah it's months. so time consuming and yeah. it's so effective and amazing and looks so great and that's yeah. why we want to get a really nice piece here for the living room. Yeah, <laughs> this art's so expensive, mate. Mate, um, yeah, I don't even know what to say about that. It's fucking <laughs> just so spot on. <laughs> I mean, just trying to get our money back for it all. <laughs> How do you go with shrinkage when you're out in cooler surf? With just, <laughs> with just the, 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 the budgies. Um, you walk into the surf pretty confident. <laughs> <laughs> and I tend to walk out of the surf holding my fins yeah. quite close to my budgies. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything seems to tuck away. I've been meaning to tell this story on the podcast for a long time and we've forward sold it so many times and I've always forgotten to do it. But one year after Womp Off, I, it was when Womp Off was at Maroubra and I got a hotel. 
uh, sort of in botany, like I think somewhere like that. And was that two years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then a few of the boys came back to the hotel to have a, have a shower with me, and I've been in my wetsuit with, with you. Yeah, yeah, footy shower, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get in there. No, we all took turns. <laughs> we all took turns, but the the shower um, glass door was sort of just frosted, Ooh. and I, I jump in there. I take my wetsuit off. And the wetsuit, it's like, it pushes everything yeah, in. Pushes, so, yeah. like, they're both inside of me. Yeah. And I don't know where the other fella is. <laughs> so, I'm in there, like, I turn it real hot. Just, like, get some body yeah. wash and I'm going for you it go- hard. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get it back. <laughs> and then I come out and the boys are just like, hey, you know that glass? It isn't that frosted. <laughs> we can see everything you're doing in there, mate. <laughs> oh, so who, who witnessed that? Ro- Robbie Miller and Jesse Morrison. Oh, so. those poor fellas. Two, yeah, yeah. I think condolences you know. to them. For I think they were into it. <laughs> <laughs> they were about to jump back in the shower Ooh. with me. Yeah, it was all good. <laughs> it was a good time. But yeah. I can't say the amount of times I have stood in that shower or had a bath after a surf just to try and get the package back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to get the package back. Um, I've always said like RuPaul's Drag Race, it's such an amazing competition because you're doing a complete talent show in drag and drag is you push everything up, you tape it up. What's RuPaul's Drag Race? It's a a, a television competition for drag queens. So it's pretty much (laughs) Survivor mixed with America's Got Talent mixed with um, Project Runway. But with a whole bunch of yeah, with with drag queens, drag queens. and um, but they've got to compete in high heels. They've got to compete with their genitalia pushed inside of them and taped up, and like that's the ultimate reality show. And that's sometimes because I always go, how do they do that? Especially if you're a drag queen, you've got to often entertain and drink a few shardies here and there, so you can't go to the toilet while, no. while you're in drag. And I always think, like, how do they get it in, in like that? But uh, what they need to do is go for a body go surf for a body first. Surf. Yeah, go, go for a body surf. And then they'll be fine. You can just pop it up and, yeah, yeah bobs your uncle. Yeah, get a bit of duct tape down there after your body surf just to make sure, you know, when you do get a bit warmer, yeah. it doesn't fall out again. But give it a goog how to tuck. It's very interesting. Should I Google that after yeah. this as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give yeah. it a go myself. Yeah. <laughs> Put my feathers I, I on and go I do wouldn't it. recommend <laughs> doing it. I don't. I don't know how they get away with doing it and endorsing, <laughs> endorsing it as well. I think. Um. Yeah. The first point you made of just go for body surf. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do the job. Yeah. <laughs> When's the water? The cold. Like, what's the cold months of the? Year? I reckon it's summer. Would you say summer for? Well, yeah. It's just when you when you go in the water, it's to cool down. So it's so hot. Like, have you ever been on the sand and you can barely walk? Oh, mate, fuck. But then the water's so. Nice and refreshing. refreshing, but it's still the water temperature still goes up. Like yeah. the water's definitely like the water now is nice, but it's nice now. A yeah. few months ago, it was definitely at its coldest. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Some reason I find in summertime it gets colder. Mm. I, I, I don't know why. I've never actually tested the temperatures, but once you're in, you're in. Yeah, that's right. Like no matter that's what. That's right. Hundred yeah. percent. I remember one morning at five thirty. I've got. I've actually got all my highlights on Instagram. But me, Richie, I think Jeremy and Vic. Went for a body surf at DY Point and I was just in my buddy smuggles. They're, they're all lucky. They've got their wetsuits and poor me. Buddy smuggles, you know, sun hasn't even come up yet. Hasn't even thought about coming up. And I think it was five degrees or four degrees. And I'm standing outside with my fins, my buddy smuggles on, taking a video. And I was like, this is fucking cold. I'm stuck. I'm standing there shaking, like, like not wanting to go on the water. Because it was so cold, but like knowing the water's warmer, you got to get in there anyway. Mm. Then five degrees. Do you remember what month this was? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> I'd have to look back. But you think it was summer? <laughs> oh, could it? It would have been. But early morning summer. An early morning yeah. summer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like you know, the sun comes up. At That's right. Earlier yeah, in yeah. summer, it would have been about. Quarter past five. I always find like in the top layer in summer of the water is so nice, but if you dive a little dive bit, deeper. it's still a bit cool. Yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good stuff. All right. Any last words? Anything you want to plug? Obviously, there's the big comp coming up soon at Avalon, the Festival of Froth. Yeah. So let's hope that all 
Like I said happens, before, yeah, gonna, let's hope it's gonna be sick. Let's hope there's a mad turnout for that. Um and see how many people we get there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um Yeah, I wonder if Should we bring her in? Do you reckon we should bring her in? Jess, would you like to say hello to everyone on the Body Soap podcast? We should get her to do the sign off. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick the whole thing up. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hello, guys. So this is your lovely partner, Jess, who's joined us in the studio She's and just watched us talk shit for the last hour and <laughs> nine minutes. <laughs> like, yeah. girlfriend. Are, are you keen to get into body surfing? Look, I'm going to have to... Apparently, it's really hard to learn. So Jared said it's going to take me a couple of years. Yeah. Like- <laughs> Oh, just being honest. Yeah, she is. She is being honest with that one, just just quietly. Um, Look, I'm a bodybuilder. I'm rigid. <laughs> I think um, I'm gonna have to set the foundations on her and get the, you know, the flip. He didn't even and... think I could swim. I I seriously. Like... <laughs> Did you bring your swimmers today? <laughs> I told Jared to I, pack your swimmers. I told her to pack her yeah, swimmers, yeah. and what she do? She didn't pack her swimmers. Because we could go. I, well, I like to practice my swims, uh, my, my spins in the pool. Sometimes. In the pool, yeah. So when yeah, I'm doing yeah. laps, yeah. I'll just do a few spins. That's what I need to get her onto. Maybe yeah. it's like get the boogie board out and yeah, make yeah, the little yeah. artificial <laughs> waves in the pool and, and start getting her to do some spins in there. But I think, like I said, I've got to get her some flippers and get her in the water. Teach her how to like doggy properly paddle. swim. I don't know if you can doggy paddle onto a wave too well. I, I've seen it. Have you seen it? I've seen a dog do it. <laughs> <laughs> On kook slams. <laughs> um, but yes, hopefully she does get into it very soon. Um, and no matter how long it takes, I think we'd all love to see her compete. Yeah. And join one of the teams. Um, and when you say compete, it's not as full on as bodybuilding tournaments. <laughs> It's just a bunch of people hanging out at the beach. So you don't need In to the worry. water, yeah, talking to, shit. You don't have to worry about the competition. Um, yeah, no, I'd like be pretty cool to see you get in the water. And It'd be pretty fun. Let's make it happen. Let's do it. What, what are we doing next weekend? Let's go we're, to Little we're Little Lav. Body surfing. Let's do it. Little Lav? Little Lav. I'm going to get some fins first. Straight Duff in. in. Is that what it is? Duff in. <laughs> if, if you're listening to Finn... <laughs> What's she there? Have you got a yeah. PO box they can send them to? <laughs> Blacksmith, Swansea, <laughs> <laughs> Jess Benick, the <laughs> <Just> Shoreys. <laughs> um, Anywho, we got to get out of here. We do, we do. Do it all again it's real been... soon. But for now, you got to remember this. Would you like to do the sign? I want you to do the sign. Really? You do the sign. I've not done it for a while. All right, all right. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much for listening. We got to get out of here. Do it all again real soon. But remember, it's always overhead when you're body, body surfing. surfing. Bye. <laughs> you.